Hey guys, Justin here. Quick note, I saw a really good uh, question on last week's video about how do we know if I'm not just throwing great setups into these cars during test sessions and getting these times. So I decided to do a race today and show you guys the long run strategies through a race. If you find any of this helpful, please like the video. It helps me out a lot with the algorithm and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos because I'm going to do them every week. All right, let's take a look at that. So a recommendation from the last video, I'm putting the inputs more front and center for you guys to see. So as you can see here, I'm using a lot of brake, just as usual, going in, building up as much momentum as possible. And I actually pretty much screw this up. So <laughs> you'll, you saw me kind of scrape the wall. For some reason, I got blessed and only lost a little bit of momentum there, so I decided to go on with the lap. But in a perfect world, you don't want to do that. You're going to be completely hooked up and going straight. And um, that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. So going into turn one here, we are going to be aiming directly at the first seam along the track. So there's a banking change between the first and second lane. The first lane is just far too flat down here. Uh, it's just far too flat, so the second lane is where you're gonna want to wrap around. Just pretend that the first lane in New Hampshire is the apron and that the second lane is the bottom lane. Okay, so you see I'm getting right down, left side's right on the apron, still dragging the brake, and then I go straight from brake to throttle, and I'm just riding it, just making sure I don't step out, and just being as aggressive on the throttle as possible, and you're able to settle pretty nicely onto the back stretch. So as we're making our way down the back stretch, you can see I'm carrying a decent amount of momentum. Same idea going into three and four, except the difference here. So you'll notice that, in my opinion, the banking change in turns three and four is a little bit less than the banking change between one and two. So you have this as the first seam. I like to get my lefts even a tiny bit below this seam if it means that I can take a slightly wider arc into the corner. If you noticed in turn one and two, I kind of wrapped the bottom a little more, but at three and four, I'm going to go for just the tiniest bit of an arc. And it'll still get me to the quote unquote bottom. So I still get my lefts pretty much right on the seam, but just a little bit later than usual, or that I didn't turn one two. And then you see right here is the moment. So right here, I get just the tiniest bit, my left sides on the apron or the first lane. And. So because of that, I'm able to power off and the car gets loose because my lefts are on the slight banking change. And I'm able just to go full throttle off the corner. It's a little bit of a handful, but it's what uh, you're going to have to deal with to get speed. You do not have to go for that little tire clip there. Um, the little tire clip only got me maybe half a tenth, maybe a little less even if you get it perfectly. So feel free just to treat the seam as the apron line and just wrap around it. Get aggressive on the brake, aggressive on the throttle, and uh, with enough practice and rhythm uh, in the braking points, you'll be able to put down a lap like that. And one more trick I want to mention to you guys is the entrance of the corners. So if you look really closely at my timing of entering the corner, I actually get on the brake and barely turn the wheel and I kind of stab the brake. You notice this little stab right here, I'll just show it again. So I stab it to half and that gets my car rotated with the 60% brake bias. And so you notice then I start putting in the wheel input when I start dragging the brake. But 
The stab allows a quick rotate of the car without having to turn the wheel because turning the wheel to turn the car is comparatively pretty slow in this situation. So you see I stab the brake and then turn into the corner and drag the brake. So stab then drag. It's a, it's a very interesting balance because you want to go to about half. You see it really turns my car down. I'm barely even turning the wheel when I stab the brake and it just gets my car pointed right where I need it to go. And then I start jacking the wheel more. And you notice I'm modulating the brake and then I go straight from brake to throttle. So if you want to maximize your speed, stab the brake to get rotation and then do straight from brake to throttle. Those are my two tips on the pedal sides of things. All right, so just got done with the race here. I ended up second and I'll explain to you um, why that was and what tire strategy you're gonna to wanna to be playing. So I was shifting the entire race and I'll show you what that looks like here. So you get it settled in the corner and then you shift it out and now this allows you to get a better drive off and a better rotation off so it's not as tempting to drive it off the right front. But I think what happened was there is reason to be saving in the first 10 laps. I think the first 10 laps of the race, if you run about two tenths or so, one to two tenths off of what you can do uh, with this optimal line, then you'll save enough tires for you to be able to uh, have faster speed at the end of the race. So as you can see here, I ended up about in the high 80s, low 90s, whereas the guy who won was ending up in the 70s. So this was because you can see here, he's shifting too. But you see how much steadier he's staying? I was attacking this corner because I believed that that was what was gonna get me the win. But you can see here that he's just letting the car roll for a super long time. He gets, he shifts down a lot later than I do. It's almost bogging down how much that he was shifting there. And this rotation that he gets from the shift at the end of the corner allows for him to use barely any wheel input for the entire corner. And he's losing time to me here because I am, I'm going very hard right now. But he's only losing a marginal amount of time and that time is gonna get paid back. So you see how early I'm shifting? So this early shift gets you short term speed, but you see I'm roasting my tires as opposed to, and this is very easy to tell the difference. Very late shifting and easy off. And now you see, he's running slower lap times than me, almost a tenth and a half. So that was a little later, but it still wasn't late enough. You, you still heard my tires after I shifted. What you want to do with this shifting that's also gonna save your tires is you want to shift at a low enough rev to where you get no tire spin. So you, you hear my tires because I'm shifting. Now, let's play this right here. So listen closely to the tires as he shifts. Absolutely no tire squeal when he shifts. And that is mainly because he is, his car is straightened out a little more and he's doing it a lower rev than I was doing it at. So as you can see here by lap 16, I built up a bit of a gap, but you can see he's just running me down, running me down. And by lap 25, he's running, I think I was held up by lap traffic there, but he is running two tenths faster than me. And you see, you see that my car gets sideways there? And that, that's all for me shifting. So that continues the trend of me shifting too early. And he gets no sideways rotation from shifting. Now I initially thought that that sideways rotation was helping me, but it's actually only hurting me because of the damage it's doing to the tires. The line itself doesn't matter too much, to be honest with you. I, I really believe that if I had a chance to run this race again, which I'll probably do some later, that I would run whatever line I was doing and here's where he makes the pass on me. But you see, he shifts in a way 
where it doesn't put any extra stress on his tires. And that's the difference. And so he's able to just outrun me for the rest of the race because he's able to save a ton of tires, both right front and right rear. Because if, as you can see, I am sliding all four tires when I'm shifting. And that's partially because of how, sh how turned my wheel is and how high the revs I'm doing the shift at. So those are the main takeaways, but I was still able to salvage a second place finish in top split with this. I'm, I'm not too beat up about it. I know that, uh, I know what to do now, which is the most important thing. And hopefully you guys are able to learn a thing or two from this race run. And uh, I think that just about covers it. It's really just the same strategy the whole time. You just wait on your car to get low revs and then you smoothly pick up the throttle out of the corner. Watch this guy one more time. Super smooth, super low revs, shifts it at low revs, then picks the throttle up smoothly and is able to power it off by the end. So you listen to his throttles, we can't really see his inputs. But he gets all the way back in the throttle pretty much on exit and he's only really riding it until then. Smooth entry, low revs, shift, turn down, pick up the throttle. And that's going to be mainly the line you're going to want to take. And this will get you to a very good position if you're able to execute this. Thanks for watching. I'm glad I could show off the race a little bit and uh, give a better idea of what you're actually going to be seeing in these races. I know there's going to be a lot of chaos in it if you're mid-pack and back, so hopefully you'll be able to get the qualifying down because starting out front in ARCA is one of the most important things you can do. But anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the track.